My thesis is entitled Making Strange, and it's a study of the strange and the uncanny in visual form. My process was to look at a lot of precedents of writers, filmmakers, art, um, who've produced the strange or weird effects in their work, and then to translate that back into, well, to formulating new thoughts about my own work through that and how my own work responds to that. I talk about the motivation of this thesis by saying uh, I, I just recently suffered a, a big loss and when somebody dies and through the grieving process everything that was one way feels the same but just ever so slightly different, just ever so slightly strange. And so I think that um, in trying to make my environment, my familiar environment unfamiliar, I was trying to mimic this experience that I've been having. So my thesis work actually really just began in the fall of this year. My, my work was very different before then. This is an installation um, in collaboration with Michael Bison. We got kind of excited about the idea of creating a space for a sort of absent character. And um, so that's what this is. This is sort of a, a space to be inhabited by someone who isn't here. My plaster aspen trees are here, sort of busting through the ceiling of windows. We scavenged these TVs from this old van lot on South Providence. The imagery is all totem poles, helicopters, and roller coasters turned upside down to sort of give that disorientation for the viewer. And so viewers are intended to come in and maybe sit in the car seat and take on the character of the, the missing character and maybe hit the button. <laughs> in the thesis show right now, I have an installation, which is actually uh, the kind of um, the model that I've been working with with these installations, which is, it's an installation of two TV monitors and a dream machine, which is um, devised by William Burroughs and Brian Jaisen as, as a kinetic machine of light, flickering light that's supposed to provoke lucid dreaming. And I have videos in both monitors. One of them is this really slow transition from sun to thunderstorm, and the other one is sort of a poppy sample of um, sounds and visuals from B-Horror Cinema. The installation is meant to be experienced, but then the installation is also coupled with a catalog that I made, a book, that distills the experience so that there's this sort of two levels into the work that I'm making. There's this kinetic experience of an installation and then this sort of intellectual experience of a catalog, and that's how I sort of merge this sort of installation work and graphic design work. The way that I speak about these installations is that um, I call them testing grounds eventually, so I make them, you know, from a totally different place and uh, just from this curiosity of making an art object, but then the way that I translate them back is that I come here and I experience sort of the kinetic sensations that you get off of flickering lights and, and reflections and, and mirroring and all that stuff, and then I translate that back into design objects, and that's been kind of the process that I describe in my thesis work or a methodology of working in terms of graphic design. I wouldn't say that that was the motive for making this piece, but I would say that that's how I learned from these pieces in order to pr produce design objects. For a while I had a hard time explaining why I was making these sort of art objects within the context of a graphic design MFA. I think I've learned from my experience in the graphic design program that there's a lot of different kinds of graphic design that people are doing. And that graphic design is a very fluid medium or, or practice that has Everyone has a different definition for it, and I don't necessarily need to ascribe to the ones that maybe the department is, is thinking, or I don't need to even judge what I think the department is thinking in terms of graphic design. I think that the lines are, are increasingly blurred, at least in terms of what we end up producing. Where I don't think that they're blurred between art and design is, is in terms of, you know, when it's client work. But I do think that RISD allows us to leave here with a certain, not just toolkit, but also just confidence to go and find clients and actually produce things that you want to produce. So maybe we can increasingly blur those lines.